and national locking the Sakari Winnetou. Deputy Chancellor Winnetou is actually Dr. Ingo the South of Winnetou. His Excellency, the guest lecturer, His Excellency Dr. Kyle Fayani, Executive Governor of APT State. Sorry for that. The Board Chancellor and Chairman of Council, the Millennium University of Kara, the Vice Chancellor, Reverend Professor, the immediate past Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, Mr. Vice Chancellors of Universities in Nigeria, members of the University Senate. All directors of units, all His Royal Highness, distinguished party call, all graduating students, and last but please, for those of who have for those of who have the program, we are starting from page 10 in our program. They are New York University of Canada. To declare this tenth convocation ceremony open. This assembly and the tenth convocation of the Indian University of Ghana. At which bachelor's, higher and honorary degrees shall be conferred. I declare the convocation open. May I now? The Chancellor of the Chief Doc in Osaka, the Governor of the State, Dr. Okaye Fayemi, the Chairman of Council and Pro Chancellor of the University, the Registrar, the Professor and Librarian of the University, members of Senate, the Minidio University of Kaya, our highly distinguished and efficient gentlemen of the Council, our distinguished guests, graduating students, and prize winners. Parents, friends, and well wishers of the Guinea University to the 10th convocation of our great university. As on all previous occasions, this is a day of fulfillment for families and our young graduates, and our joys are unlimited. We have every reason to celebrate. Thank God our efforts and sacrifices as parents have not been in vain. Thank God our efforts as students, our hard work and toils have been fruitful. Thank God we have surmounted the challenges that beset us, including downturns that seemed to make our graduation a bridge too far. But all thanks to God, the day has finally come. As a university, we rejoice with you and pray that God that has stood you on solid ground, through it all will guide you to the great future that lies ahead of you. Amen. For the first time in the history of the Benedio University of Canada, we are having a convocation for award of degrees across two days. Coinciding with the special landmark of the university's 10th convocation, it may be said that the ascension to two-day convocation marks are coming of age, and I think every graduating student today must consider himself and herself special to be part of this historic transition. But graduates of the Gunedia University of Canada have always been special. This is an account of the excellent tuition and tutelage the university offers through its competent and dedicated teaching and support staff in a liberal but disciplined environment. Little wonder, therefore, our graduates 
are in such hot demand and they are doing so well. As you must know by now, most of our graduates, nearly 70% of them, proceed to postgraduate programs abroad after graduation. And they have mostly graduated at the top of their classes. It is because of this that the Canadian University of Canada graduates applying to universities in Canada for graduate studies are exempted from the English language proficiency requirement. Only 30 Nigerian universities, thank you, thank you. Only 30 Nigerian universities enjoy this exemption out of a total of 230 all over the world. And the Grenada University is only one of two private universities from Nigeria on this privileged list. The Grenada University graduates also enjoy first choice placements in elite and lucrative jobs in Nigeria, while a good number of them are making waves as entrepreneurs in the manufacturing, management, service, entertainment, and sporting sectors. I should quickly add that our students and graduates have become established and well-respected authors of books, of novels, of inspirational writings, and motivational studies. All of this goes to show that indeed, as the saying goes, the taste of the pudding lies in the eater. It is against this background that recently we adopted Authentic as IUO's brand anchor. I congratulate you all for being authentic graduates of an authentic university. As you march into the future, remain authentic and God will bless your endeavors. The easiest way to remain authentic is to keep close contact with the university wherever you go and join the alumni association and the alumni networks. Visit your website, www.iuo.edu.ng regularly to enjoy the continuous support of your own IUO. Let me now quickly share some thoughts and information on matters that directly affect you and your university. The first is that the Honorable Chancellor's charge that will give automatic employment to graduates with first class honors degrees who desire to pursue academic careers is alive and well. We look forward to the day when heads of departments, deans, directors, registrar, librarian, bursar, and indeed vice chancellor will come from the ranks of old students of IUO and will gladly encourage and support eligible alumni to grow along these paths. Happily, our postgraduate school is waxing stronger by the day. Tomorrow, 16 doctorate and 36 master's degrees will be awarded. I encourage our graduates to make optimal use of the opportunities offered for postgraduate training. Second, for graduates who desire to set up private enterprises and dream of becoming the chief ingredients of the future, you should feel free to work with our entrepreneurship program for free professional services on funding, grants application, feasibility studies, and so on. Similarly, our career placement and guidance unit in the registry will gladly receive inquiries and guide you on employment opportunities and how to secure the best jobs. To our parents and friends, we thank you for your confidence in your only authentic private university, the Great Ibenedio University, Okada. Against all the odds occasioned by the assault on our university by fifth columnists and agents of destruction. Today, you have the reward for believing and trusting in us and contributing to the development of the university. In this connection, let me place on record a deep appreciation of the material support by parents of our pharmacy students 
towards the accreditation of that program by the Pharmacies Council of Nigeria and the activities and benefactions of the Parents Consultative Forum, the PCF, in the areas of student welfare, infrastructural development, municipal services, and staff welfare. The forum's most recent undertaking, and I'd like for all of us to listen to this, the forum's most recent undertaking to award full scholarships to students who suffer the loss of parents in the course of their studies is the latest in a series of interventions that shows that with caring parents, there is very little we cannot do. We thank you, parents. In closing, let me introduce the fundraising initiative recently launched by the university for several development projects that are planned and invite you, our parents, our friends, and our well-wishers to embrace it and contribute generously. As many of you now know, the task of building a first-class university is a shared responsibility that goes beyond modest school fees and other charges. The Benedio University of Okada, your authentic university, will remain eternally grateful for every contribution to our collective successes. of the Bermuda University of Canada to address the convocation. Where can you see
during the one year program. To build the necessary synergies and capacities for these initiatives, the federal, the federal government could revitalize the National Directorate of Employment, NDE, to facilitate skill acquisition, training for undergraduates and the youth club members, while the National Business and Technical Examinations Board, NAPTEM, could certify the apprentices through these examination modules. While I commend the federal government for youth employment initiatives, such as the UWIN initiative, I am of the opinion that such resources can be channeled through the proposed structures for effectiveness yeah, and measurable impact. I am happy to place on record that Ibinetia University in Ukara is the pioneer of entrepreneurship program as a mandatory program for all undergraduate students. As I speak, other leading private universities have emulated our good step and have instituted entrepreneurship in their curricula. It is also worthy to note that the Millennium University of Canada, in the ongoing 2012-2013 academic section, employed a new director of entrepreneurship straight from the industry with vast experience in business development and robust skills in grooming enterprise among youths. I am therefore delighted to assure the world that products of the Millennium University of Canada are not job seekers, but groomed enterprise leaders. At IUO, we believe that good quality education will refine and strengthen a person's innate abilities. Great institutions train great minds, and great teachers need great schools. So, I thank all members of academic staff that have labored to produce this wonderful crop of students. I wish to reassure our lecturers and other staff of the university's commitment to adequate compensation for diligence and commitment. The least we do is to ensure that competitive salaries are paid as and when due. Salaries have never been delayed or paid in areas, as all of you can testify. In conclusion, my address will not be complete without acknowledging the partnership this university continues to enjoy with our regulatory and accrediting bodies, particularly the National University Commission, NUC, and other professional regulatory bodies, such especially we that our efforts at the private university are not insufficiently acknowledged. We appreciate the work and rules of these bodies, which have continuously kept us at a line. We let me conclude by reminding us all that the duty of our I now have the singular privilege and honor to address the text of I congratulate the young graduates of the university on your success in your degree examinations, which mark the end of your toiling for the past years in the Canadian University. The ceremony today is a testimony of your commitment and hard work throughout the course of your stay. I thank your parents for believing in us even when private university education is still relatively new to Nigeria, a nation with over 160 million people, out of which over 10 million youth seek admission for university education in about 99 existing universities, including the privately owned ones. Marking the 10th convocation of the Canadian University gives me a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that this university has truly come of age. I understand the university this year is sending out another set of over 800 graduates from various disciplines including medicine, law, engineering, nursing, 
pharmacy, accounting, and other wage and graduate programs of the BSD into the Nigerian labor market for impact. I am happy to note that the graduates of the Green University are doing well in different fields of human endeavor. Recently, four engineering graduates of the university had scholarship in various universities in South Africa. The report we get from them is quite impressive. We monitor our students even after graduation. The results so far have been fantastic. Years ago, a graduate of computer science at the Green University, Ms. Erwin Ofuma Akere, distinguished herself in Leicester University, United Kingdom, where she came up as the best overall in her master's program in hardware engineering. The quality of training in the Green University, no doubt, has continued to make a difference in Nigeria's educational environment in sub-Saharan Africa and the world at large. I call on both the federal and state government to set aside special scholarship funds for training of young Nigerians in engineering and other technical programs as industrial development of this nation will depend largely on the level of the developed manpower in science and technology. The funds could be extended to expand the capacity of our local universities to train people in technological programs. The idea is to promote the development of local technologies for local industries and above all train engineers and technicians in the application of such technologies. PhD in various fields. In my mind that we will excel because we have confidence in the quality of training and discipline we have received here. As you convoke today, a strong impetus is set up that we are not only on the right track, but getting closer to our goals. I sincerely thank the management staff for their commitment to duty, which is an eloquent testimony to the quality of graduates produced by the university. The tenth convocational lecture of the Indian University of Canada. Honorable Chancellor Sir, may I, Dr. Nura Lima, to give the citation of His Excellency Dr. Kayode Fayemi, Executive Governor of the State of Nigeria, the tenth convocational lecturer. Of the major university of Canada. <laughs> Dr. This is most of us. Also, Your Excellency, Executive Governor, Executive Governor of AKG State, Dr. Kanye B. Payani. Permit me, sir, to address you in the second person, in the second person singular. Because what I'll present today would be a reminder to you, and not only to us who know you, but to yourself, of the achievement that you have made so far. Your Excellency, sir, you need your area education at Ado You then proceeded to study history politics, and international relations at the universities of Lagos and the University of Egypt. And the best scholar that you are, you did your doctoral degree in war studies at the University of London in the United Kingdom. You specialize in civil military relations to honor and accord these ties between the two arms. Mr. Governor, you are divinely anointed. You are one of 
honored by the great citizens of the Kitsi State as their leader. Against many officers, you demand that the winner of the Kitsi gubernatorial elections on October 2012. Now, now, sir, you have said to to the demanding task of leading your set with far, with far reaching reforms and developmental goals. And we, all of us, we know that you will do very well. Indeed, sir, an Algerian program has it that a Good Friday is known from the preceding Wednesday. Your credentials, sir. Your credentials, even before you venture into politics, are quite intimidating. You are an epitome. You are an epitome of success and achievements. Your Excellency, the academia is your preliminary constituency. You have lived and prospered as an intellectual giant. You are the immediate past director of the Center for Democracy and Development. That is a research institute that is dedicated to study and promotion of democratic advancement. Also an institute that is dedicated to cementing peace and expansion of human security in Africa. Also, Kamnasa, you have been a lecturer, a journalist, a researcher, and you are a strategy advisor, nationally and internationally. Mr. Gunnar, you are the strategy development advisor at London City Channel. So are you a research fellow at the African Research and Information Bureau in the United Kingdom. You have also worked as a reporter to the British newspapers, The Guardian and the City Temple. In addition, sir, you were an editor of the monthly bulletin, Nigeria Now. As well, Mr. Gunnar, you were a management consultant and the lecturer at the police college in Sokoto. You also played a pivotal role in returning democracy to Nigeria after the long period of military rule. You as well served as a global consultant and advisor to transnational justice, regional integration, constitutionalism, security sector reform, and civil military relations. G. 
GCKD, Doctor of Letters, Doctor of Law, MIT, JPE, Commander of the Federal Republic, represented today by the Deputy Chancellor, His Excellency, Lady Ebnedia, to invite our guest lecturer, Executive Governor of the United States, Doctor Ayodele Payeni, Honorable Chancellor. of the University Senate, parents, friends, and graduates at the 10th Convocation Ceremony of the Indian University of Kada. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press. It is always a matter of utmost pleasure to be on a university campus, to interact with scholars, students, and administrators, and indeed the world, that is the world that normally comes to a university and for which a university is created. Because the university is a veritable universe in a city even if based in a small town, and some might say al Qaeda is a small town. The universe of the university transforms its locale into a city. Only two days ago, I was at the small town of Falma in Brighty, United Kingdom, at the Institute of Most of the concerns that have animated the discourse on national question arose from the faulty political architecture in our country as passed down from the period of colonial rule and was deepened by a self-serving and rapacious post-colonial elite which not only privatized the state for personal gains, perpetrated bad governance and played up divisions in order to sustain their base but promoted also an authoritarian ethos that enable poverty, violence, and crime to thrive. The militarization of the national psyche, entrenched under various dictatorships, coupled with the exclusion that many groups experienced, resulted in the numerous eruptions of intense communal and fairly internecine conflicts that have torn the erstwhile harmonious relations across many communities. At issue, was also the loss of compromise and accommodation, making violence seem as the only viable option for the resolution of conflicts. We're currently witnessing that again in the Boko Haram insurgents in the northern part of the country now. And the case for regional cooperation and integration is predicated upon the need to find a more appropriate institutional mechanisms for the promotion of consensus, management of diversity, and the mediation of conflict within an essentially plural society. With the demilitarization of politics in the wider society, even when we agree that vestiges of the militarized ethos still persist in the larger polity, the space for democratic reforms are certainly widened and there is a need to reinvent the Nigerian landscape of politics to de-emphasize the beclouding and conflation of issues of development with the obstacles posed by ethnicity, religion, and personality cult. While the formal termination of authoritarian rule has not led to the emergence and acceptance of the state as representing a broad social consensus beyond its affirmation as a juridical principle in the Constitution. The perseverance of the concerns around ethnicity and identity 
emphasizes the artificiality of state boundaries and calls for a wider response hinged on social consensus. If the challenges facing our states are regional and possibly global in scope, as they involve a range of national, subnational, and transnational actors, then the resolution would have to involve options that also include regional ones. Whilst it might be important to resolve the crisis of governance, which has accentuated the evolution of the national question, on the basis of the state, tying such resolutions to territorial boundaries in a nation whereby power is located in subnational and supranational political, economic, and social networks, weaken the envisaged results of development as it pertains to the creation of social consensus among diverse communities and constituencies in our country. At present, Nigeria is located between the polarities of a supernation and a localization adopting the views of ethnocentrism, thereby amplifying the illegitimacy of the artificial state and offering the opportunity for regionalism to stem in as panacea to the highly weakened state. And any prospect for genuine democratization and development in Nigeria needs to be anchored on regional or zonal frameworks in order to succeed. And this is already apparent in the creation and enlargement of regional bodies in the past few years, such as the South-South Braced States Commission, the Southwest Development Agenda for Western Nigeria, the Southeast Governors Forum, and of course the Northern Governors Forum. And for regionalism to effectively counter extreme nationalism and ethnocentrism, it must permeate the state in a deeply rooted fashion. And that is why one of the key suggestions I'm making here is that the zones that are already internalized by us must be constitutionalized in the current constitution reform process that is ongoing. Otherwise, if the current challenge confronting the state through the actions of non-state actors and measures, the possibilities of consolidating the process of democratization are marginal or non-existing. The recognition of a multidimensional approach to development without a reconceptualization of the delimiting state boundaries will undermine the curse for holistic development, the developmental agenda. In order for development to start the end of freedom and empowerment, which will facilitate the resolution of the national question, there is the need to embrace regionalism as a means of transcending the structure imposed by the localization of conflict while responding to the force field of the nationalization of political and economic realities. This is within the purview of the artificiality of states, the refusal to ascend to the recalcitrant nation, and the need to urgently adopt a mechanism for consensual resolution. If we work together as states within the same contiguous territory, the likelihood of achieving economies of scale is higher the likelihood of comparative advantage is higher. The likelihood of learning lessons from one another is also higher. And this clearly is what has started happening when you look at the formations that I earlier referred to, either in the Bray States or in the Southwest Development Agenda for Western Nigeria or in the South East Governors Forum or in the Northern Governors Forum. And of course, tied to this proposal on regionality are many of the pertinent proposals that are equally acceptable to most states. The, the concentration of power from the center, regionalism would help us address the lack of trust between the state and the federal center. As all of us can see, the state pushes for issues like state policing. The federal center wants to hold on to federal policing. The state wants 
resources to be devolved to local levels. The federal centre wants to hold on to resources and also hold on to tasks that really should not be the business of the federal centre. If this suspicion persists, perhaps the zones entrenched in the constitution might offer us the panacea to help address the concerns that have led to the distrust and mistrust that also that will help regain the confidence of the citizens who, after all, are the ultimate beneficiary of all this struggle for constitutional reform. Regionalism, therefore, as is, it, as is being currently reinvented as a program in Western Nigeria, seeks to enable the process of political, legal, economic, social, and cultural cooperation among juridical states as a way of boosting and expanding their growth and development. It is designed to facilitate the execution of projects across participating states in areas of mutual benefit and comparative advantage in a manner that reinvents the development paradigm of the old Western region. It considers the zone as an economic block needing to harness a cost-effective approach to the setting up of infrastructure, industrialization, commerce, and the development of the environment and agriculture. It is about development as freedom and the essential basis of creating life more abundant, social organization more relevant, since units within this system are capable of pulling resources together to withstand the shocks and unfortunate circumstances whilst also using that opportunity to pull up others who are not as endowed. The camera, the camera now fit the move again. Some mode of validating regional, political, social and economic expression as a vital attempt at solving the troubling national question or subset of questions in Nigeria locates it within the framework of federalism which essentially offers a structure for diverse groups and constituencies to coexist. As such, a primary premise of the federal principle is the freedom of groups for self-determination in order to meet their peculiar needs, while not jeopardizing the well-being and existence of other entities in the federation. This essentially links up with the vital concerns encompassed in the national question pertaining to how groups within a plural society need to be allowed to express and benefit from their uniqueness without being constrained or excluded. A federation, by its very nature, is a crucible of interests, and no particular interest, whether small or big, should be allowed to dominate or suffer at the expense or pleasure of others, if not the appeal to agitations and violence will continue to linger. As a theory of need, therefore, federalism is hinged upon the recognition of unevenness in the natural or historical composition of social formations across the world. And it is fairly given fact that most of the constituent units of the federation are incapable of being at par either in terms of resources or geography. A regional approach to the resolution of the national question in Nigeria therefore evolves from the consideration of the federal state as basically a work in progress, which is still seeking the best structural path to make its uniqueness, enhance the welfare and empowerment of its diverse people. It is an approach to the federal project in the country from a federalizing rather than an ethnic perspective which promotes the coalition of a group of federating units that are culturally contiguous, historically, geographically, and economically, and which are bound by shared mythology and ancestors to attain the vanguard of a cohesive subnational unit reinvented for economic development and progress. It is about enacting shared objective and cooperation for growth by a team of state actors on another subnational federating level. The activation of this sort of economic union is critical for the reduction of scarcity, which informed opinion has pointed out as a primary motivator 
of concern that resolved into the national question and its entourage of agitation and conflict. In Nigeria, Chancellor Distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, history points out that the pursuit and attainment of good rights has been a more sustaining and enduring venture than the struggle for individual rights, unlike in Europe and North America. And citizenship and the derivation of benefits across communities have been more meaningful within the context of attainment of group rights. Moreover, individual rights are usually subordinated to group rights in several places, such as in terms of the access to land and in the ethos of different age groups. Therefore, Regionalism as a platform for the sharing and promotion of economic, social, and cultural objectives by a group of states seeking to broaden and deepen their developmental base in a way that leverages their unique competencies and widens the value chains affirm the vital dimension of creation, creating a cultural expression out of a geographic one on a horizontal level. I must point out, without any shadow of a doubt, that the regional response is not a secessionist response. When we argue for regionalism, we're arguing for integration. We're not suggesting in our own view that this should automatically result in defederalizing and disintegration. As it is stated, in the ground setting document of integration, the development agenda for Western Nigeria, done. a composite regional integration and development agenda for the Southwest has become imperative in order to fulfill the immense potential of the region. Yoruba land has always been known as hubs of economic growth, demonstrators of good governance, and bastions of sophisticated culture for the entire African region. The latent capacity remains and has indeed grown. And it is time to take stock of the fact that it is apparent that given the tectonic shift in global political economy and globalization, a return to the halcyon days of regional governance in Nigeria, and particularly the trailblazing era of Chifobafemi Awolawo, may be unrealistic. Nevertheless, a paradigm shift in the Nigerian political and economic order is imperative for the Nigerian nation to move closer to its actualization. Hence, in a plural society like Nigeria, with differences in economic development cast along the regional and ethnic divide, and a fairly overwhelming concentration of legislative power and fiscal resources in the federal government, the need for regional strategies for development as a way of resolving the national question cannot be overemphasized. The empowerment of the regional process will certainly enable the concept of subnational group to be able to control the nature and pace of their development whilst contributing to the broadly national progress. In order for regionalism, therefore, to become a proper blueprint for governance in Nigeria, it needs to move beyond simply being an intergovernmental political solution, which is currently what it is, to the demands of development to becoming a constitutionally formalized mode of alliance across intending states in the country. While the human resources needed to empower regional collaboration and integration is already in place, what remains is the constitution of a legal framework that will guide the shape of regional collaboration, including the nature of how it will be regulated and reconstituted, if need be. States should still be the organizing blocks or constituents of a regional system and the epicenter of a derived platform for regulation and administration. In as much as regionalism tends to draw some degree of weariness as its introduction by the Richards Constitution of 1946 is considered as having mainstreamed identity politics into our national life in Nigeria and enable the structural imbalance codified in the Light of Tune Constitution of 1954 whereby the Northern Federation unit was larger than the other two units combined, thereby resolving in a tripartite conflict structure 
Its reinvention as a largely economic and development platform is one whose legal composition to essentially promote human and social growth will forestall many of the issues that have settled into the national question. For a holistic notion of development to become the reason depth of the Nigerian state, there is need for fundamental reform of the faulty legal architecture of the country through constitutional process that will deal with powers and how they share across the various levels of government. But we do not believe, in our own view, that that process should be finalized in the hand of the National Assembly. We feel the Nigerian people, who are we the people, should still have a role to play in the national referendum that would determine the eventual ownership of the constitution reform process. And through this development, we can determine crucial constitutional reform issues that will facilitate such state of being, including the devolution of more power to the state and lower authorities by the recomposition of the exclusive, concurrent, and residual legislative needs in the Nigerian constitution. State should get more powers that will cohere into the regional construct and that will improve and impact more on the lives of our people in their education, health, water, and infrastructural perspectives. In tandem with this, the revenue sharing formula should reflect proper derivation to resource producing regions, whilst provision for an equalization fund should be made will be made to assist less resource endowed areas in the spirit of true federalism. Also, the reform legal regime will need to include provisions allowing for bipartisanship and peer review across regions. Mr. Chancellor, Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my job is done. And all that remains for me is the university for extending this invitation to me on behalf of the government and the people of Equity State and to commend you on a decade of promoting excellence in university administration and culture. I am here with a strong delegation from Equity State. The Vice Chancellor of our own university, Equity State University, is there with me, Professor the Provost of our College of Education is also here with me, Professor Francisca Aladejano, the Chairperson of our State Universal Basic Education Board is also here with me, Professor Muruko Adelabu, and of course our Honorable Commissioner for Information, and civic orientation, Honorable Fumi Afuya is here. The president of our student union at the State University, Mr. Riva is here. We are indeed delighted and we want to once again congratulate all the graduates. I should seize the opportunity, of course to formally invite our very own special graduate who I earlier described to see me uh, in Adri Kitty for a special <laughs> for a special expression of our gratitude to her and to all of our graduates from EGT State for making us proud here. I know that we'll continue to excel and beat our record. Next time around, we'll produce the best graduating students. Thank you. Please keep clapping.
So please, another round of applause.
Western Nigeria now used to extend from Lagos to Asaba under one government. And yet people did not feel marginalized because the government took into account the yearnings of the people who live within that territorial space. But of course, manipulation by politicians came into it as well, and we ended up the way we are. But the way we are is far more damaging because it has unitarized Nigeria. All of us are now practicing what I've often referred to as feeding bottle federalism, taking handouts from the center. And it is our own money. They will designate it as 2% education tax rate. And somebody sits in Abuja buying books for us in Ekiti and Edo. Why would you sit in Abuja and buy books for us in Ekiti? When the students of Ekiti are the ones who will do for us. And there are issues that are peculiar to them that they want to attend to. Yes, you can have a regulatory framework nationally, but you should not be implementing agents nationally. If it is to be effective, if it is to be closer to the people, then it has to be devolved to their level. And that's why I made the point that the 68 items we have on the exclusive list of the legislative list is unacceptable if we are a federal republic. As a matter of fact, you have federal republics that now practice not even unity in diversity, but diversity in unity. Thank you very much. So that's the list. He, in the Constitution, has begged for mediating between the federal and the state because the two units don't trust each other. We have two federating units now. I am suggesting that let us have a third federating unit in the zones and then develop mechanisms for ensuring that the zones relate to the federal and the state.